you have 10 clients, you have 100 tasks, all these things coming at you. How do you organize it? In our company, we use Asana. To learn more, stay tuned for it. In services businesses where the tasks are shorter in nature, there is just a lot more work coming at you. There are tasks for many clients doing various things, and this can get a little overwhelming. Some people use their own little task management systems, scribbling notes on a page, notebooks, uh, tasks in Outlook, things like that. But to be truly organized, you want to have everything combined together into a single space associated with a single project so that it's easy to manage and it's also easy to know what needs to get done and when. In many services businesses like ours, there's a tool called Asana. And Asana makes it really easy to manage all those activities associated with your projects. I'm gonna walk through how we use Asana in our organization. Hopefully you'll glean some insights in how best to use this product. When you start in Asana, you have a main screen. And the screens will show you the tasks that are due soon, some of the favorite projects that you might be working on, and some of the recent projects where you've had some interaction. Off to the side, there's a main menu. And on that menu, the most important place you're ever going to work is the one that says, My Tasks. When you go to My Tasks, you see them, and they can be sorted by many ways. I always sort them by due date. That way I can see the tasks that are due the soonest. Associated with every task is a project, and a project in a services business is typically associated with a client. That is, a client can have one or many projects. And then you can have a team of people associated with that client or those projects. And that's how we organize Asana. We create one or more projects for every one of our clients to manage all of the different activities that have to occur. Now Asana has a, a way to make it really easy to consistently execute the activities. And that is through something called templates. What we do is we use templates for every type of project we have. So that the project manager can simply import the template and then assign due dates and assign people to do those tasks within the context of the project. For example, you see there we have templates for logo design, for doing Google ads, templates for blogging, templates for building custom websites. We have templates for many different projects. And all these tasks in there make it super easy for us to consistently deliver our solutions. An example is the website template, which has quite a few steps. And we organize them in such a way that it's really easy to determine what needs to happen next. And it makes it easy for the project manager to sign those out. Now you may not be importing templates, but you are going to be working on tasks, likely if you're working in Asana. And that's where you should understand how best to use Asana and the capabilities it has. For example, I have a task to create the video you're watching right now. And in it, I have some details. I have a tag. On this tag, I can use any text to create a tag. But tags are a great way to organize your tasks. For example, the tag on this one says shortlist for today. I have dozens of tasks that I need to do, and I may have dozens of tasks assigned to today, but I might not be able to get to all of them. So when I am processing my tasks every morning and at the end of every day, what I will do is apply the shortlist for today tag. So of the 30 or 40 tasks that I may have due tomorrow, maybe only four or five are tagged shortlist for today. This method of tagging allows me to get to what I really need to see in an organized manner, whether it's a short list or whether it's organized in other manners. For example, here's some other tags that we use. We have client facing tags, analytics tags. If a client owes us something, we create a task to follow up with them and we apply a client owes us tag. We have critical tags. I have a tag called someday. Maybe. That way, if I want to go work on something much, much later in the future, I don't lose the thought. But if I have time, I can go see what's out there. And then tags for progress and teams and so forth. And that's how we use tags in Asana. The next thing I want to point out are collaborators. When you're working on a task or assigning a task, the first collaborator is the person it's assigned to. However, there's the ability to have other collaborators that you might be working on together. Why is this important? It's important because each collaborator is going to get an update when something's changed in that task. For example, maybe I'll add Daisy as a collaborator here. This way, when I update the task or make any changes, 
she'll get notified that it happened, which is a nice segue into notifications. You can track comments about a task at any given time. Sure, you can update the description. That's a great way to make changes as well. But comments give you a point in time snapshot of what it is that you want to share. And in the comments, you can also call out anybody in Asana and get their attention. For example, I might call out Daisy and say, I just added you as a collaborator. Daisy would get this notification that occurred. Or maybe I have a question. I have a question about the task I'm working. I can call out the person and in that task, I have the question and then they can answer in comments there. If you're using a collaboration and communication system, much like Slack or Microsoft Teams, you may want to have those questions and inquiries in those channels. That way a broader audience can see them. However, you can also call people out in Asana. The way I like to think about it is, I'm going to call somebody out in Asana when I have a question specific to a task for an individual that I know doesn't need to have further follow-on conversation. The kind of conversation I would have, say, in Microsoft Teams. And once this is complete, I just click comment. And now I have an audit trail of the comments. And this is really useful when you're working a task and you need the interactions of other people. One of the biggest challenges everyone faces with a task list is the due date. Something passes due and it turns red and it gets older and older and older until you're looking at a sea of red and then you don't know what your priorities are. It is critical with any tool that helps you manage your activities that every single day, minimum once, preferably twice a day, you update the due dates and make comments on your tasks so that you never have red tasks. Majority of my tasks on the screen right now are marked today. I don't really have a sea of red. And as I work through my tasks, for example, at the end of the day, the things I don't get to, I will give a new due date to those, either tomorrow or maybe sometime next week if I can't get to it tomorrow. But managing your due dates is the most important thing. The other thing I would encourage you to do is always have a due date. If you receive a task and it doesn't have a due date, find out when it's due and put it there. Or if you're assigning something to someone, always put a due date. Why do you do this? Well, many people have tasks that uh, go on for page after page, hundreds of tasks. And the ones that don't have due dates end up at the bottom of the list. And those tasks without due dates are sometimes never seen. So if you wanna ensure that when assigning a task to somebody or creating it for yourself, that it actually gets seen and done, make sure that the due date's in there and that the due date's reasonable and realistic. Don't put the due date today when you really don't need it for two weeks. Now when you're managing tasks or giving tasks or even working tasks, sometimes there are many things that have to be accomplished for that single task to be marked complete. And those many things uh, either are dependencies, whereas you have to do one thing before another can happen, or they're subtasks. They are a subset of what you're trying to accomplish. For this video, for example, maybe I have a subtask to create a script. So I have my subtask there. And that still shows up as task, but it, now it shows up underneath the main task. And when you look to the left, when you see video for Asana services businesses, you'll see next to comments a one, there's one comment, and next to subtasks, you'll see a one, and that's create a script for the Asana video. And I can add another one, you'll see that it iterates to two. And when I use subtasks, well, you can see there's a lot more to creating a video than just create the video. There are several tasks that have to be accomplished for us to successfully go from concept to published video. And now these are all tasks that can be assigned to different people. When I record one of these videos, I often write the script and record it myself. But then I have somebody else that goes in and then they edit it. A third person will create a graphic thumbnail for it. A fourth person, a copywriter, will write the copy associated with this video so they can be published. And all these things are put together and then eventually published on YouTube and ultimately published on our own website. These things are all very important steps. If I just had this as a single task in Asana, that would be fine, but something could get dropped. If I use subtasks, I can then break this down and assign each person their individual part. And then when all of those are complete, I can mark their main one complete. We talked a bit about comments and calling people out. On the left side, Asana has an inbox. This is where all those communications occur. Yes, you will get an email from Asana whenever somebody sends you a message. And if that's your best way to keeping up with those things, great. Click the link and go read it. But if you wanna go back and see 
other times when people commented or called you out, you go to the inbox and you look there. I can scroll through my inbox and I can see all the different things that people have put out that required my attention. When you are involved in many projects, especially if you're in project management and you have dozens of projects underneath uh, your review, it gets challenging to keep up with all these. Then some projects finish and go away and other new ones come up. The way to organize this is Asana has something called favorites. And what you want to do is the projects that are currently active for you, you want to tag that as a favorite. So for example, I went on the main page and I went to the recent projects, things I've been to recently. And I see that I had a leadership team one. I can now click on the three buttons, the three dots, and I can go to add to favorites. And that will show up on the left side of my screen. So now I have fast access to the leadership team's Asana level 10 meeting uh, project plan. And this is very useful. And if you want to learn more about level 10 meetings, I will comment on it below and I'll point to a video up above so that you can see how we do a level 10 meetings in Asana. So as you can see, Asana is a very useful tool for managing all the tasks and activities that you have associated with a project. Combine Asana with a collaboration platform like Teams and together you can really run a well-organized remote team of people where we have project accountability and really great communication. I hope this is helpful. I do videos like this every single week. Sometimes they're on technology, sometimes marketing, sometimes personal development. I'd love to know your comments on it. Are you using a different project management tool for your services business? If so, put in the comments below. Or if there's something that you do differently that I mentioned, I'd love to hear that too. Put in the comments below. If you liked what you saw, give me a thumbs up. If you want to share, subscribe and hit the bell. Thanks for your time, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.